Hello one and all, I am on a beach, I am looking for shark's teeth, fossilised ones. I may find something, I may not, I should walk down the beach though, because I've never really found much up this way. I can guarantee that's what that guy's doing on his hands and knees. Just need to find one tooth, and it'll reignite my memories of coming here and searching for hours and not finding a huge amount. I did find, I found loads of teeth to be fair, loads and loads. These little shells, which are grey, are fossils, opposed to modern shells. Around 55 million years old. Get that one through your head. Come on, I need to find at least one little piece of shark's tooth, and then you won't think I'm crazy. Found a piece of fossilised ray mouth platelet thing here, which makes me want to keep looking with the camera on. So this is fossilised seabed clay stuff, I believe. We've even got something that looks like it's got wood in it at home. See, that's fossilised. It's just a little uh, mollusky thing. Mollusk? Is that a mollusk? Uh, I don't know. I think so. uh, and these little round things are known as sand dollars, but they're tiny. Not really interested in the sand dollars because I have millions of them. Because there are millions. There's another one there, 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 another one there. Teeth. Come on. A tooth. One tooth. And I will feel fulfilled. And if you're thinking, oh, you're going to get a really bad back doing that spicy, I will. Eventually. <laughs> but I actually have like this method. See, that's a cockle shell and that's fossilised as well. You can just tell from the colour. Um. I have this method of like walking on my hands on my knees, so I'm like triangulating my back. The big teeth obviously stand out easy, but it's the smaller ones that don't. So I nearly overlooked the best one I ever found. Can you see this? No, you can't because it's really grubby. See that? Fossilised shark's tooth. Told you. Another one. Two. There's one. Three. See? You see these people are just walking up and down really fast. Attention to detail is how you find these things. Still got an hour before low tide, so the best picking is yet to happen. But I basically want to work my way along and then go down with the tide backwards and forwards. Just think that thing grew 55 odd million years ago. Yeah, my boots. That is a massive sand dollar. Because it's not a sand dollar. Come on, we're finding little ones. I want big ones. I'm still trying to, like, this big, you can sometimes find them. I want one of those. The little ones are cool. It's always nice to find something every few minutes. There you go. There's another one. We've got two now. Four. Okay, so we're currently a grand total of five. And at least three or four of them are quite nice. One's a bit battered. My feet are indeed soaked. I should have brought some different shoes with me. 
I didn't actually go in the water with these boots. I've just been walking on wet sand. But somehow, the rubber soles seem to wick up the water and my feet are actually soaked. It's a bit unpleasant at this point. Not great for my boots either, but for God's sake. Oh God, that is such a lie. That is the perfect shape of the top of a shark's tooth, but it's just weed. Oh. These are weird. It looks like a snot bubble, doesn't it? But it's some... I can't remember what they are. They're some uh, algal form of life. Or something like that. They're weird. And I only ever find them on this beach. Right. Where are we? We're nearly back at the place. See, that is evil. See the shape of that? That is the exact same shape as some of the teeth that I would be looking for, particularly the large ones. Well, I might have soggy feet, but I found a few teeth. I'll, uh, I'll put a little bit of video on the end of here. I'll show you the other ones. I found the bigger ones, the more impressive ones. One. <laughs> Well, here we go. Here are the ones that I found in this video. I've got all the other ones that I found I want to show you in a minute, and I've got a different camera so I can show you super close up, but I'm going to show you the bigger stuff first. But these are the, the bits that I found in this video. They look all actually in really nice condition. Um, you'll see that some of them just aren't uh, the ones I found before. And that's, if you can see the little ridges on there, that is inside a ray's mouth. They don't have teeth. They have like these, these bony platelets and they rub them together and that's how they grind their food up. Um, and you get little sections of it, sometimes full sections, sometimes big bits, little bits. That's just a bit I found. Anyway, okay, so remember I said about that fossilized mud, you couldn't see it very close. This is, well, I, th I assume it's mud, but it is definitely fossilized. Um, it's very strange. Almost looks like a turd, but I don't think it is. Um, but I was saying about other things that you find that are fossilized that are obviously wood and things like that. That is quite clearly a piece of wooden branch. I mean, look, you can see a knot, you can see the, the, the bark and stuff. Uh, it just it just looks like a piece of wood. And when I picked it up, I was like, oh, it's just a piece of wood. And I was like, hang on, no, it's not, because listen. Stone, so it's fossilised wood. Um, and this little bit, I think, is a piece of fossilised branch of some sort. Here is one of those fossilised shells I was showing you. See, this one's in perfect condition. And you also find things like this. This doesn't look that fossilised, but it is, because I dug it out of the mud myself from a, from a fossil layer. Uh, and the interesting thing about these going back to the mud is, or it might be from this side, is you find these. And it, I found a few of them, like there's that one, and, and these ones. And I thought, you know, what, well, what the hell is it? Is it? Is it poop? Is it some weird thing? And then suddenly it dawned on me, this is fossilised mud. Like, this is fossil. I think it was when I found this one, it confirmed it to me. I suspected this was fossilised mud that's from inside one of these, and then the shell's all broken off, so you get the inner bit. And when I found that, well, it's, it's pretty obvious, isn't it, that it's probably from inside one of these or something very similar, and that's the mud from the inside. Pretty cool. Here's one of those, like, large clam cockle type things. This, again, is definitely a fossil. Uh, it looks, you can see, it looks quite different to this, which is a... A, a, a new shell, as it were. Uh, this is actually the shell, whereas in this is minerals which has replaced the shape of the shell. That's what a fossil is. Remember, how to become a fossil. Stage one, die. These aren't the same species. This is a prickly cockle, I think it's called, or a king, king Yeah, prickly cockle. Massive thing. I've only ever found one of these on our beaches. Um, but this is quite clearly quite similar. I don't know. Depending on the rings, maybe 20 years old, 30 years old, something like that. 55 million years old. <laughs> so here is the box of all the fossils that I've found. And as you can see, there's tons of shark's teeth, but I'll go close to those on the, uh, the other camera. So that's a 5P, it's not fossilized. Um, tons of teeth, but let's, oh, and there's this one as well. Probably can show you that close up. I'll show you the other ones, because these are all microscopically small. Again, I know this is a fossil, because I dug it out of the mud layer. It was actually very close to that one. Uh, I didn't find these where I did this video. I found these ones in uh, Barton on Sea. Yeah, how amazing is that? And it's it's paper thin. How it survived is just amazing. Another weird thing. 
I think that's like from the base of some sort of coral or a barnacle or something, because it it kind of looks like one of those giant barnacly things or the things that are above. I don't know. And there's one of those, and I find these still now. But again, that came out of the fossil layer. We are on the very edge of the capabilities of this camera close up. It might be, oh no, actually that's probably good enough. As you can see, that's, um, I would like to find a big version of that in good condition. I found lots of pieces of them. See, that's that was obviously a bigger one than that. And it would have originally had its big horns off and you get these ones and these ones. They come a lot smaller as well, um, but that one, as you can see, has been really rounded by the stones. Over time, it will come out of the mud absolutely pristine and razor sharp, and I'll show you that in a second. But over time, they get bashed around by the sea, and in, sometimes all you find is little lumps like that. That might just look like a stone, but if you actually look at it, you can tell that is definitely a shark's tooth. So these are quite worn and battered. That's obviously worn and battered. These are, again pretty worn and battered. Some are okay, some are broken. They would have been nice ones, but they only got snapped off. And then there's these which are a bit better, and then there's these which are the perfect ones. And there is the tooth, the best one I ever found. Right, let's switch to the other camera. So okay, these are the ones that I found in this video again. And as you can see, they are absolutely perfect, most of them. Still got all the ridges on them, razor sharp edges. And these are tiny. Uh, let's have a quick look. Right, so this medium sized one is about 11 millimeters long. So these, as I say, these are really small. Okay, so here's the biggest one I've found. Uh, not in the most perfect condition, but it is absolutely razor sharp still. There, can you see the edge on it? Pretty damn amazing, if you ask me. Um, Okay, so this is a much smaller one, but as you can see, they come in slightly different shapes. I mean, the bigger one and that one's probably the same species, just of a very different size. You can see there's, there's they've always got these sort of extra little lumps either side, and some of them have got two. Uh, I can't remember which ones these are from. I know for a fact the bigger ones I was showing you are from a sand tiger shark that was very common. And here's another species of shark. Now, I can't remember exactly which one this is. I'll, if I can find them, I'll put them on the screen, because I know I've found these out and put them on my um, Spice 110 Photography Instagram page. You can find pictures of all of the fossils that I find. I'm, so I think I'm finding maybe three species of different shark's teeth. That's a really nice one. You may notice, again, back to the ones that I found in this video, apart from this, see, this is a tiny little one. I'm not sure what species, I mean, I mean, I assume it's the same species as the big ones. It's the same sort of look and colour, but I'll have to check that. Um, but what is nice is all the ones that I found today are obviously come out of the mud quite recently because they're all so fresh, shiny and sharp. And you can see the, the discolor, uh, slightly different coloured edge there where it gets so thin. It, you know where flint goes a slightly light, light colour where it goes translucent? Amazing. Right, well, shark's teeth are cool, um, but there is probably only so, so many that you'll want to see. So let me show you a few of the other things. I'm not entirely sure what this is, but... I, I did know at one point, I've got a feeling it's either a piece of um, stingray barb or or is it or is it like a sea urchin spine? I can't remember. Or maybe it's something completely different. Maybe it's just a piece of wood. Kind of looks a bit woody. But what I can definitely tell what it is, and you'll be able to tell this too, and yes, I did find these in the exact same way I found the teeth. Oh my god, they're so small. They're tiny. Can you tell what these are? Does that help? They are fossilised fish vertebrae. Kind of amazing I managed to find those on the sand. You also find tiny little shells like this, and like this. Strange geometric one, but you'll recognise if you look in books or look at modern things, these are all very much just the same thing. I even found one of these, and this has still got both halves to it. And then there's a, there's a tiny, tiny little snail thing. That thing is... about six millimetres across. I mean, if I just put my thumb on it, thumb on it, it went, I'd destroy it. 
These ones are found at Barton on Sea, um, as was this one. This is amazing. This is quite clearly a conch of some sort, but it's absolutely tiny, like a spiny conch. These you can find, well, about these ones, I only found one of these, but these little ones, you can find these by the thousand up at Barton on Sea. Uh, they're not difficult to find at all. In fact, lots of the, the shells are actually very easy because there were so many of them. And also because people aren't quite as interested in them as the other things. I've got two more things to show you and then I'll let you go. Okay, so remember I said about the ray platelets from their mouth? These are pieces of that. Basically like a tooth, but a, a, a raspy tooth rather than a normal tooth. Remember I said about the sand dollars, there's a much bigger one. I've got, well, I've got hundreds of these. It's big ones and you get little tiny ones. They come in all sorts of different sizes. If you break one of these open and you manage to get it perfect, it'll look like this. Insert image because I can't find it in the box. Um, as you can see, it's not. it might just look like a little squidged thing when it's when it's not open, but when it is open, it's quite clearly some sort of sort of animal, sort of snaily thing. Not snail, you know what I mean. Probably closely related to ammonites or something like that. Not ammonites. Do I mean ammonites? I don't even know what I mean anymore. So yeah, finding these things isn't necessarily that hard. It will take a lot of patience and maybe a little bit of discomfort on your hands and knees. But you can find these things and they're all over the south coast. Not all over entirely, uh, then I'll get on to that because I'll quite, very quickly explain how I know the age of these. So the way I know what age these are is because I know what formation or layer of clay they came out of. If you imagine that the seabed is made up of layers of clay um, or sediment or whatever, but it basically it compresses into clay and in that is all the teeth and all the stuff that gets fossilised is the minerals out of the, the clay replace the actual organic matter as it were. So obviously as it's in layers the older stuff is towards the bottom. Now these layers lay underneath the earth, underneath the soil, quite deeply. Um, in places on the, the, the land they can actually be exposed and you can go directly down to them. Uh, there's actually a place in London um, that's just a, a fossil park of some sort. It's not a fossil park, but it's an area that you can get permission to go into and you can just dig in the sand uh, and, and the mud there and just find loads and loads of teeth. And they're normally in quite good condition because they're obviously not being washed around by the sea. That's what damages the fossils by the beach and why everyone wants to find the ones right at the edge of the water because they're the freshest, they're the best condition. So anyway, yeah, this formation of mud in the area that I'm looking in basically comes out of the land at an angle. Imagine we're now going sideways. So this is, so this is the sea, this is the land, and the mud formation kind of comes underneath and goes out and it's exposed under the sea. And in some cases, when there's a very low tide, you'll get parts of the, the, the sort of low water level will be here and you'll be able to see actual parts of the actual very bed. And you can literally dig through that and find, you know, find um, fossils throughout it. So along the whole of the south coast and underneath most of your feet around England, I believe, if you went down deep enough, you would start digging up fossils. Um, but that's why people do the easy thing, which is go to where it's exposed. And it may mean that it's only exposed in very small, hundreds of yards wide, or maybe half mile wide, or a few miles at a time. And then it may be covered up again for some reason uh, for, for many miles. Which is why along the south coast you have those hot spots like you have the Jurassic coast and further down you have more bits like round Selsey there is stuff and there's stuff further down and yeah it's it's very very interesting if you live on the south coast and particularly if you have kids go to the beach try and go and find some f fossilized shark's teeth I'm sure it would inspire them massively and think of the education they can have to realise that how old this world is and it might bring things into perspective for them you know to think that this this little shark was using this tooth to eat food 55 million years ago. And every single one of these fossils here, I was the first human being to ever touch them. And they're mine. They belong to me because I found them. And all it cost me was a bit of time and some patience. I do advise if you want to know about finding fossils, there is a few websites in the UK guides in fact to different locations and it will explain what sort of fossils you'll find, what sort of age they are. Um, what accessibility is like and the local rules and all those things because you can't just go to places with a rock hammer and start hammering away at rocks. You're allowed to do it in certain places, the ones that are like loose at the bottom of the beach, but you can't go up to a physical face and start hacking into it hoping to find stuff because, well basically, you're, those are normally eroding cliffs, which is why you tend to find these more readily after storms because uh, they get washed out of the mud. 
Also, if you're in one of those areas where you can see exposed um, seabed and it's above ground, le above sea level, when it rains, that very often washes the mud off of the, the teeth, and you can see that you can find them. Um, sometimes they're known as being on plinths, where literally where the mud's eroded off around them, they sit like that up, waiting for you to find it. I did actually make a couple of videos a year or so ago, maybe it was two years ago, I don't know, my back really threw things out last year, where I went to Barton-on-Sea and I did videos. If I can find them, I'll put links to them at the end of the video, or maybe in the description, but yeah. Let's say, fossil hunting. Super cool, super fun. Nice to get outside and get away from everything and just, you know, take a breath of fresh air and get a new perspective on life, maybe. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. If you enjoy the content of my channel, maybe consider supporting me through Patreon. Uh, and there's also ways of supporting me through things like the Spice 110 Metalworks. I'm a metal artist. I make things out of old motorcycles. I have clocks available now. And have a look. Catch you next time.